Welcome to, uh, I was miles away, uh, welcome to Anderson's TV, this is uh, all about the base, I'm Nathan, and I'm the captain, and today we're talking about this rather fabulous Ibanez base, what's it called Lee? Well, this is the SRFF6, uh, which is, that's part, a mouthful, yes, it's part of a, a limited, uh, um, I don't want to say it's limited run as such, but it's sort of like a bit experimental from Ibanez. I say limited, it's almost like, let's just see if this whole thing catches on or not before we commit too heavily to it. And it's the whole fan fret thing, which um, isn't completely new, but certainly hasn't been mainstream until... No, also, also known as multi-scale, which is a, a so, very good way of describing it. So if you're watching this and thinking that you've got something wrong with your computer screen because all the frets look wonky, <laughs> uh, you haven't. Uh, Yes, you're you're completely correct in seeing that the frets are all at sort of different slanted angles, sort of almost slanted one way at the headstock end, kind of becoming fairly conventional and straight in the middle to sort of slanting back the other way the closer you get to the pickups. Yeah. And why is that, Nathan? Okay, well this is the uh, this is what it's all about. So if you see, like the bridge also mirrors the the frets, so the bridge is set back this way, and then the nut also is set back this way, kind of mirroring what the frets are doing. And the idea with this is that uh, your lower strings have a longer scale length uh, and that means you can have more tension on them so they don't become so floppy. Yeah, it's a, it's a dilemma, isn't it, I think, for... And, and the fan fret thing is, is a technology that is available in both electric guitars and bass guitars and I guess has kind of been driven by more modern styles of music where uh, some of the drop tuning has become so extreme uh, that the conventional scale length of an electric guitar or, or a jazz bass or something like that just is not long enough to maintain any kind of tension in your lower strings mm -hmm. unless you're using crazy thickness strings which quite often then guitars aren't even built to hold so you know nuts need to be recut and saddles can't you know all that kind of stuff so recut my nuts yeah so the, the fan fret idea was was quite an interesting uh, solution to this this problem by basically going well well how about we have a sort of a conventional scale length starting on the top strings going down to on this particular model about a two inch longer scale length by the time you get to the bottom mm. uh, B string on this yeah and you know you, you have to sort of say that it it kind of works and the only thing that um, I guess you've got to get over as a player yeah. are the wonky frets and, and and that half of me wants that's the bit that I want to explore the most really in this video which well, is I, I'm finding it very interesting because I, I saw it hung on the wall you know a while ago you had it up here and uh, I was kind of like what why is that and why now I've looked into it a little bit I totally understand the why it makes a lot of sense to me and now uh, this is the first time that bit of noodling that you've just heard uh, it's the first time I've ever played this thing so if you know it can't be that hard quite frankly you know it's it really doesn't feel unnatural to play yeah. even if it looks weird it doesn't feel odd yeah i mean so f as far as i'm aware ibanez haven't released this on a four string yet i'm guessing they're sort of assuming that perhaps the the um the 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 amount you would want to drop tune on a four string probably doesn't warrant it yet no. so it's only the five string and the six string that have this um fan fret option and we thought we'd grab the the six string because i guess it is the most extreme you yeah. know, difference. So obviously imagine if you're not, I'm sure all you guys know, but obviously on a, on a, on a five string bass, you know, these four strings are the same and then they add a, a bottom B 
and then on a six string bass it doesn't go one lower again you get you get an extra high i can't remember what it is it's c. c isn't it yeah, yeah. so um essentially if we just didn't have this really high string these would be the same five strings that That's you get right. on, a, on a, yeah. a five string mm. it's got the same preamp system out of the sr800 which are fabulous bases great value um so active eq active three band eq uh, an, an option to just turn the active system or the eq system off and then three different sort of mid positions uh frequencies that the mid control will work on yeah so that really I, I love that that's a really great thing i think eq in and out because yeah. it's kind of like you can have a whole other sound set up ready to go yeah so you know you just got your, your flat bass sound and then you just flick that switch and suddenly all your active eqs kicked in yeah I, I like that they use the bartolini pickups which they use also on the standard sr 800 series yeah. um yet again and it seems to be a pretty common theme with ibanez over the last uh, year or two particularly um this is utterly the wrong price isn't it basically it's it's it, well, when when i say I, wrong <laughs> when you told me how much it was yeah i almost fell over i have yeah. to say because this looks and feels like a really expensive base you know yeah. custom built sort of thing and uh, how much is it 800 quid i know we had kind of had the same thing when we did the sr 300 and that was like 200 quid That's I, th I think there's a it's theme at the moment that nuts. almost everything from ibanez is coming through at like half the price that it sort of feels that it should be it's ridiculous fair play to ibanez now look so let's focus in. Let, let's let's. Um, I've also got, by the way, just a normal five-string bass that isn't fan fretted. Um, to kind of what I'm trying to do is is somehow get Nathan to be able to demonstrate um, just you know why maybe it's a problem to have a, a drop tuned B string on a conventional scale length uh, yeah. bass. You know what? Why does it become sort of unusably floppy? Um, well, there's, there's something else actually that, 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 I, that I suddenly thought of because you know, we're mm. talking about Frost. This is another band I play with. Yeah. We're going out and doing some gigs next week uh, for the first time in absolutely ages. And what uh, we always do in that band is when we go out, we, we do detune all the guitars, we, did, we play everything a semitone lower than it yeah. is on the record. Because you know, all the guys they sing yeah. far too high in the studio, not mm. thinking they're going to have to go out and gig it later. And of course, when it comes to it, it's sort of like. Ah, so we have to detune everything in semitone because it makes a huge difference to your vocal yeah. range. Yeah. Now, and that's when guitars really suffer, you know, especially with uh, something like a low yeah. uh, string on a fine Do you think that, I mean, I think most people would say on a standard scale length guitar or bass, yeah. you can drop a semitone. No, you, in, in, not, not, not on a five string bass. Oh, yeah. on a five string, right. Honestly, th this, this string becomes so floppy, oh, okay. uh, it really affects the tone. Well, it, we'll do tone. that. What we'll do is, I was thinking you'd have to maybe drop by a whole tone no, or even no, more than that. No, no, We'll just, do that, we'll do some comparative things. So let's, um, I'm not probably gonna f focus too much on the EQ. We did an SR800 in-depth video uh, a few weeks back. Yeah. where we kind of do we spend a lot of time messing around so it's probably easier if you guys just go and watch that if you're really keen to know sort of what the eq does i think this video is very much staying focused on the fan fret aspect of this multi-scale aka um, aka yeah. um so let's let's focus first then um nathan picked this base up like you know 20 minutes before we started filming so the first thing is uh, obviously a six string is a much wider fretboard than perhaps you yeah. would typically get. I've never but played a six string bass before either. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I haven't. So uh, but it's, a, it's a whole series of firsts for me. I know when I've played a fan fret electric guitar, uh, it looks worse than it actually is, if that makes sense. You know, you, 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 it looks as if all the chords are going to be weird to play and the I, I guess, yeah, if, if, you're in, if you're in the habit of looking at what you're doing, it's probably not a good idea. I mean, yeah. I, I try not to anyway. Yeah. So yeah. let's just, just run through some basic, you know, play some two or three different sort of riffs and styles and stuff and then maybe just comment on, did you even, do you even notice you're playing a, a, a guitar with wonky frets? Well, from the, th okay, yeah, I can, I can certainly do that. Uh, let's have a, a little fiddle around. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. So the bass is just flat at the moment. Yeah. Uh, both pickups on, nothing weird there. Uh, all right, let's try a bit of. Uh... I'm not looking then. Yep. 
thing you can do, never look. But that's why hanging away, that's quite good. So you're, you're not looking, so your muscle memory in your fingers is obviously going to where you think yeah. you should be. That's weird though, isn't it? Because so, you think that, that shouldn't really work, but, but, uh, but somehow does it, it does. Then, so you didn't, all the bum notes were intentional there, were they? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, that's, I always play like that. <laughs> But it's no, character. I just, I mean, it, it, in all seriousness, that was jazz. It was jazz, you. was it? Um, so jeez. No, nothing. You didn't. You, you know, nothing feels weird. It really doesn't. You know, it really doesn't. What's, what's great about this is the, the action on this thing is great too, man. I mean, it just plays itself. It's ridiculous. I was so. Do you think that the? Uh, do you think it would be possible as a bass player to have uh, one guitar, one bass that wasn't fan fret and one that was, and just switch between them, or do you think that you've got to? Absolutely, a, yeah. I've never, I've never played, I've never played a bass like this before, until now, and it's, yep. it's no, it's no problem at all. It's so weird, isn't it? Because it, it just looks like it really should be. It does. Um, well, the thing is, it's, it's like an optical illusion. The neck, if you look at it in the right way, the neck looks like it goes like this. Yeah. So yeah, I think you have to buy special curved strings that go that way, <laughs> which might be expensive. No, they are, just in case anybody thinks that, you know, Nathan might be being serious there, these are just normal strings. I think the only thing you've probably got to be careful on is I'm not a million percent sure that every single brand of long scale string is quite long enough. I know some of them. My, I think on rotor sound, some rotor sound sets the the the, the, the long must scale. Must suffer on the on yeah, the A and the D. It's the ones where they've got like the piano wound ends. You need you need they, they make like special sets for longer scale. Maybe guitars, we can find out and anyway, write that, it on the bottom. I'm sure. It? I'm sure. As and when, it, like 15 years after you buy this guitar and remember to change the strings on it, you'll have to remember that <laughs> in the video. He said maybe it's not just a regular set, but that's uh, so. The next kind of, yeah, I think the next demo was, let's, um, we might switch the camera off for two seconds or whatever, but let's just drop tune yeah. the bottom B on this down. Let's go a whole tone. Let's, okay. just, let's just do a tone down. Maybe so. we can get to an AB box and um, just be able to switch the two straight over, yeah? Yeah, sure. All right, let's do that. See you in a minute. So uh, we've, all we've done is literally just drop tuned the uh, the bottom string. So we've gone from a B to an A. So we've dropped down a whole tone. Yeah. Um, and Nathan's just going to literally play them both and comment. I mean, obviously, if you can hear a sound difference, then you know we can talk about that as well. But it's mainly going to be like a feel and you know maybe a fret buzz issue, all that kind of stuff. So. Let's go, just on that B string. Or so, okay, so we're down a whole tone on this. Yeah. So what was B is now A, a low A. It's very, very low. You probably can't even hear it. <laughs> so. Now you see that that's really that's that's workable for me. It's not that ain't bad. I mean, even acoustically, if you if we turn it down a kick, one of the things I could even I can even see yeah. is is it really the, the, the tension in that string? Yeah, is I mean that's oh yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't see it from here. We almost need like slow mo cam, don't we? But this this string is going. Well, this is what you get because and, and that's still thing. relatively tight, isn't it? That one on yours. So. It is, yeah. Anyway, play 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 a little bit on this and then just comment really on on how usable you think that isn't drop tuned like oh yeah no see immediately the tone's gone yeah. you can hardly make out what the note is Immediately, we're getting a lot more sort of fret it's got like buzz. a flutter, hasn't it? It almost has behind it. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much that would be improved. I, I'm guessing what what would be on this, like a 110, maybe a maybe a 115. Oh, I imagine, like yeah, standard. Um, oh no, on here. 
Mm. And on a five, now it'd be heavier, I think. I know, yeah, it's like a 125. Sorry, yeah, yeah, at least 125, 130. So yeah. I don't know, how, I, don't, I don't even know how much heavier you can even go on bass strings to sort of... I think um, you can go pretty heavy, yeah. um, but uh, I don't know if I want that, to do that would, it. Really. I guess that would be one way to kind of try and resolve some of the, the tension issues in there, would just be to go much, much heavier. But as I was saying before, you know, if you increase... That's going to affect the, the feel of Yeah, playing, and you increase right. the width of the string, and then all of a sudden, you know, things like the, the nut... You know, you can see how close the nut on a typical five string is cut to the edge of the, the neck. Yeah, I, I, I mean, hopefully you uh, you could sort of get some sort of difference. So we, we might as well switch back around to the... Yeah, get the that. I mean, it's, we don't want that anymore. Don't want Perfectly it. good. Very nice bass, by the way. I don't want to say anything negative about no. this. As long as you play in the sort of the tuning, it was designed to be played Absolutely, in. and that's what, um, this, that's what this is all about. This is, uh, you know, so you can tune down and uh, yeah. it's still playable, you know. Which so, is something that I'm going to have to do very soon, so... Uh, so look, I think Think I think to end uh, this video, uh, we'll. I think we've been trying to get uh, Nathan to to play with a little TC Ditto Looper because we love using those so much in the guitar videos. Yeah. So another first for Nathan here is. Uh, we're not. We're not going to do that though. Yeah, play a little. No, we're not. Bit. No, we're not going to do that because oh, what we've got, got people want it now. No, no. What we, what Lee's going to do is he's going to accompany me uh, <laughs> on the drums. Can I? Can we do both? No, no. You're going to uh, play that drum machine. That's going to be great. Let check this out because hit me with the groove, man. This hit is, me with the groove. Uh, this has got. Uh, um, I'll see where the muse takes me. Hang on a second. I just wanted to get some special. I found a good. <laughs> <laughs> no need for that. Right, yeah. Let's find another one. Hang on a second. I was. I found a good one. Well, I say a good one. I picked this up thinking it would be a, like a drum machine with normal drum sounds in it, but it's purely and simply 80s electro. Pop well, that's drum good. sounds. It's, it is for you. It just takes you back to your childhood, doesn't it? Oh! Um, ow! Should oh. the name sort of give? Oh, there it is. Be happy. This is the close. Hit me, man! Hit me! Is that the intro? I don't know. It was like. <laughs> Thank you so much to the Korg Electribe for that interesting uh, two minutes of tomfoolery. Yeah. Um, there we are. Anyway, verdict is. Uh, do you know what? This is. Uh, well, you, know, you have to be unbiased, but I love this. I think it's brilliant. I, I, I'm staggered as well by it. And again, so five string as well. I'll put the link in the description below to the five string and the six string. They if you are, want a five string version, I suggest you just leave this one off. Well, they're, and they're, they are quite tough to get hold of at the moment because, uh, as I said, Ivan is very much feels like it's sort of toe in the water and just, you know, are these going to be popular or aren't these that, you know, let's not make a thousand of them and then find out that we've got 950 left to sell. Uh, so I know typically for Andertons at the moment, we are struggling to um, get more than one or two a month of these. So, right. And they are selling faster than we get them. So well, check, check it out, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. It's cool. Yeah. I think my, you know, Electribe intermission really 
brought out the best in everything about this video. To be it might be it sweat. Could, it could well be a permanent feature uh, <laughs> of, uh, of these videos in the future. Comment in the section below if, if you love um, DJ Lee. Yeah, DJ Lee. Um, <laughs> MC Captain. <laughs> How do you do it? You yo, do? yo, yo, man. <clears throat> so I got a really horrendous case of arthritis. Or <laughs> anyway, that's it. S R F F six. F F S. F F F F S. Got a chill. Oh. See you later. Nice one. Thanks. Catch you next time. Ta da. More sort of fret. It's got like a flutter, hasn't it? Almost it has. behind it. Um, yeah. And this is what I noticed. <laughs> Off beef, God's sake. <laughs> 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 Is that what said? Flutter? <laughs> That's not fun. You went through with two fingers. <laughs> you, you, that was. I had a right in the camera. A flutter, you say? Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was just that. Yeah. <laughs> like nothing coming in the most natural thing. Just. A flutter? Oh, man. It's unusable, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> oh, for f**k's sake. Go next door. <laughs> okay. Right, back in the room. You know, you widen that hole um, too much, or that you just end up snapping the edge. Here we go. As soon as I said, widen the hole. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of edits. Oh There's going to be a lot God. of edits in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the parts are called. I can't call them anything else. <laughs> <laughs>